Let's talk about progesterone. But more specifically, let's talk about mood swings, anxiety, um, menstrual migraines, increase in irritability, fatigue, low sex drive, sleep disturbances, all right? All of this can be related to low progesterone. What are some causes of low progesterone? And what are some symptoms of low progesterone? Then obviously let's talk about some simple ways to actually address that low progesterone And that doesn't necessarily mean going out and getting a prescription. Let's first talk about what is progesterone. So it is a female sex hormone and it plays a really important role in the menstrual cycle as well as pregnancy maintenance. It affects our weight distribution and it is really important for those of you that are still ovulating and having menstrual cycles. It is a really important hormone during the second half of our menstrual cycle, okay? So why is it important? Well, first of all, sometimes maybe you've heard of something called estrogen dominance. Okay, estrogen dominance, we do not like. We don't like estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance is associated with uterine fibroids, estrogen dependent cancers like breast, ovarian, colon and uterine cancers. It can be associated with really heavy bleeding, heavy cramping, breast tenderness, fibrocystic breasts, menstrual migraines, irritability. I could go on and on and on. But sometimes it's that the progesterone is too low in relationship to the estrogen, okay? And without ample progesterone, irritability skyrockets, Sleep disturbances can be a real issue where you just feel like your sleep is disastrous. No matter how much time you're spending in bed, you're waking up still not feeling rested. It's also highly associated with our ability to focus. So if you're feeling brain fog, lack of clarity, walking into a room and you're like, wait, why did it, what was I gonna do again? A lot of that can be associated with low progesterone. So a couple things, let's get into some solutions and then I'm gonna wrap this up. How do we increase our progesterone? Yes, you can go get a prescription for the pill or hormone replacement therapy. It is not my go-to. It is striking to see what we're learning about progestins, which is the form of synthetic progesterone that is in most hormone replacement therapy as well as contraception. Unless you're doing bioidentical progesterone, that's different. But pharmaceutical progesterone, we are learning that it wreaks havoc on the adrenals. For some reason, it sends the adrenals into hyperdrive, and now they're pumping out cortisol without that negative loop. So now the adrenals are exhausted, okay? So I'm not going to be suggesting prescriptions there's lots of other things that we can do in the meantime. So number one, stress management. Number two, healthy fats. So eating your avocados, your nuts, your seeds, getting in coconut oil, MCT oil, um, taking your vitamin D as in dog every day. I'm a big advocate of adaptogen elixirs and drinking your adaptogen elixir every day, adding in a protein source such as collagen and a fat source such as MCT oil, coconut oil, even olive oil, avocado oil. There is a supplement called Chaste Tree Berry. It's also known as Vitex. For years, I was intimidated and humbled by it and rarely suggested it. Over the years, I'm getting more and more comfortable. It is powerful at bringing your progesterone up. Uh, It's good to use in collaboration with a provider or working with someone like me who knows how to do it. And we can try certain times in your menstrual cycle and you want to give it a good three month try but it is good at what it does there are also some progesterone creams that tend to come from wild yam sources sometimes those can be helpful from a supplemental perspective i'm glad that you've enjoyed this look forward to chatting with any and all of you please comment down below if you have additional questions i'll dm you with a link let's have a conversation and ta-ta for now